Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's kind of football time. Mediocre (laughs) teams. Uh, Thursday, October 22nd. Welcome into the show. I like how many fans right now of New York Giants fans, Philadelphia fans, like they're super upset about it. But then they're like, yeah, we know. We know. Yeah, he's he's right. Our division is an embarrassment. There was some news this morning about the Raiders offensive line. They are all quarantining because their right tackle is on the COVID list. So they've practiced two days without an offensive line. And I put that out on Twitter. Like I posted this gif of a player running through a minefield, said it was Derek Carr. Every Eagles fan That's Carson insta- Wentz, yeah. instantly replied and said, this has been Carson Wentz all year long. That's fair. And uh, he gets to try try again tonight. Oh, Somebody has a, to win. He's getting That's an, uh, not true. Oh, that, the good Eagles point. have already done that. That is true. He's getting an all-pro right tackle back, so that, that should at least help, finally. One would think. One would think. Uh Running game could be suspect tonight, but we'll see what happens. We do have Thursday night football. Apologies to our listeners. Apparently, a hundred times yesterday, I insinuated that there was a game last night. Uh, look, time is a flat loop right now. Uh, yeah, I don't know what day it is. I don't know where exactly. we're at. Also, but, Mike, you'll be happy to know. I finally did it. Oh, what'd you do? I finally had too many bowls of cereal where I made myself <laughs> sick. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done because you you polled the audience at, with, with a leading question of should I eat four bowls or unlimited bowls? Yeah, and it's the humans should not eat four bowls in one sitting. Yeah, but then he Russell Wilson did. What number did you get to, Mister Unlimited? I I uh, I drained two milk quantities, like two bowls full of milk. Okay. So, you know, you eat all the cereal out, then you refill the cereal, Mm -hmm. then you eat all that cereal out. Eventually, you run out of milk. I went back to the top with the milk and then just kept doing bowls until that one was gone. And then I felt a little bit sick. Is this why you're wearing the big shimmy shirt that I just (laughs) noticed? (laughs) Well, I know I did like a 10-minute cycling ride last night, so. Oh, 10. You're good. You burned off half of one of those bowls? (laughs) I figured I'd reward myself. How many rides did you do last night, Jason? Ten. Ten rides? Ten rides. Ten rides. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Ten separate? Yeah. One minute rides? It was. It, <laughs> yes, exactly. Every, uh, you know, every full revolution of the pedals oh, yeah. of the ride, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did ten, ten rides. Ten revolutions? Yes, yeah, okay. right. Okay. All right. Welcome into the show. We have a jam-packed episode, news and notes, the forecast, so we'll get into the matchups. For week seven, we've got the starts of the week today. Jason's boom boom kicker. Oh man! Uh, which do, do we have a rule? You can't triple up, right? It's I mean, impossible this week, and it's very sad. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it's very likely that you're still gonna go with blank and shit. We'll see. All right, stay uh, tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> you don't want to miss this. YouTube.com/slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to watch the show, you can subscribe. You can click the bell. And get notified when we go live for special events. Mike does a Sunday live each and every week, getting you ready with the last minute news and notes from the morning. And uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow Mike, you can do so at FF Hitman, Jason oh. at Jason FFL. And I'm a- Andy Holloway. Same handles over on Instagram. Let's take it to 100. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head and Shoulders. Available at Walmart. We won't talk about last week because it's all about this week. Yeah. Look at the future. The future, yeah. Uh, we're going to pick a player that we think is going to take it up to 100 in week seven. Normally choosing from a player that's had a couple down weeks or ranked outside the consensus top starters of the week. I'm going to go with Tom Brady this week. 
a uh, couple couple stanky weeks from oh, Tom Brady. Got that stanky leg. Yeah, and he's had to deal with kind of a a shifting wide receiver core. He hasn't cracked the top 20 in a couple of weeks. He's got them all back. I know he had them last week, but you got another week of practice with uh, the Goblin, Chris Goblin, and uh, Mike Evans, Rob Gronkowski starting to get involved. Takes on the Raiders, and I think he breaks out. I think he takes to 100 this week. All right. Uh for mine, I'm, I'm playing a quarterback that we came into this year uh, expecting big things, mm -hmm. have been super disappointed, only has had one week on the season where he has been a top 12 guy. In fact, has not yet thrown for 300 yards this season Boo! in Matthew Stafford. Yeah, it hurts, man. But light him up because the Atlanta Falcons matchup has not yet had anyone not throw for 300 yards. Every single game they're impressive. throwing for 300 or, say, 400 plus yards Tons of touchdowns. Julio Jones is active. That is the difference maker to me because the Atlanta Falcons offense will absolutely be able to make Stafford have to throw the ball. You have Galladay back. I think this is finally the week that Matthew Stafford takes it to uh, 57 point over under the highest on the week. I think Galladay scores twice this week. Let's go. It's going to be a big one. Now, speaking of players finally taking it to 100, we're going with a dart throw here. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, wide receiver from the Green Bay Packers. He still has an 18% target share from Aaron Rodgers. The last three weeks, Houston is giving up an average of 40 points to the wide receiver position. This is a bit of a riskier play, but this is – you might look at your roster and say, I, I am screwed with some bye week things happening here. My team is in some shambles. And if you could throw MVS in your flex – I think that uh, he he has he has the 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 chance this week of really taking your team over the top. Take it to one hundred. We know that Aaron Rodgers tries to get at least twenty to twenty five grimaces in to each and every game. Mm -hmm. The majority of those do come in correlation with Marquez Valdez Scantling not catching deep passes. That's why not. he continues to throw him the ball. He needs to up his quota of grimaces. That's right. Uh, let me give you a choice here, Mike. I, I like the pick. If you had to. Take the dart throw on MVS, mm -hmm. Andy Isabella, or Deshaun Jackson returning tonight. Which of those three players do you take Oof. the dart throw on for fantasy? Deshaun Jackson is alluring uh, because <laughs> of the Giants. I like that. Uh, but I would go with MVS out of those three. The, the, the targets are just – the targets are there. The connection just simply hasn't happened. And the targets are – they're always deep for MVS. And, and the thing is, is MVS is not a great player. We know this. But he has, on those targets – he has connected them before. He's had big, giant fantasy games before. And so it's just kind of trying to predict, okay, which which matchup looks right? This one looks right. You could do worse. All right, take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders, available at Walmart. Uh, you can pick yours up today and check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how our up to 100 picks of the week fared. News and notes from around the league. All right, like I said, the Raiders' offensive line sent home from practice after right tackle Trent Brown tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, do we have that confirmed that he is actually – I mean, I guess it – Yes, it, it was assumed he it was, was positive. A, yes, it was a positive. So, yeah, I mean, you need an offensive line from what I understand. I mean, the Eagles don't necessarily believe that, but something to monitor. You're going to have uh, potential for – I think this game isn't in question unless somebody else – Comes down positive, but um, he's not practicing with mm -hmm. them. Some worry, I think, out there for you know Josh Jacobs, for example, where his offensive line, you're at least going to be missing Trent Brown. You're facing a tough defensive front in Tampa Bay. Something to w monitor. Yeah, the, the Tampa Bay defense gets a couple clicks up here. All right. Michael Thomas? Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas decided uh, one injury wasn't enough. Tweaked yeah. his hamstring in practice. He's returning from, or presumably returning from the high ankle sprain. What are your expectations going into the week for Michael Thomas, knowing that this hamstring is a factor as well? If he's active, are you ranking him in the same fashion? I, I'm <clears throat> certainly not ranking him in the same fashion that I would rank him if he didn't have this. This is a double injury coming back. I, uh, here, double up. D uh, Thank uh, you. Uh, um, ow, here's the thing. I'm still going to start him. Yes. If he's active, he's Michael Thomas, you start him. But I would not rank him the same. Um, you know, the, the soft tissue issue after having time off, and we've seen this 
for several star wide receivers this year, um, it, it can take a couple of weeks or it can be re-aggravated. So it, it's worrisome and it stinks because anybody who drafted Michael Thomas is like, finally, finally I get my guy back. And then it's, what is this? Yeah, yeah bust apotamus. <laughs> there, uh, there you go. Sometimes you just got to throw it out. You got to throw it out. We'll see what happens. Um, not the first hippopotamus related joke this oh, week. So it won't be the last. <laughs> I will say this. If, if he's not a guarantee to play and we just brought up a bunch of, you know, bottom of the barrel names, MBS dart throws like D Um, Traquan would be somebody to monitor. Sure. A lot of people let go of Traquan Smith and not interested with Thomas coming back, but somebody to pay attention to. You go to Traquan though. We, I mean, we will talk about that matchup, but probably Sanders not. is the one who just had the big week. Uh, that would, Sanders is rostered, though. That's the hard fair. part. Okay, yeah. fair. Joe Mixon did not practice on Wednesday. Uh, it's an interesting midweek situation for Joe Mixon because we just went through this with him two weeks ago where everybody added Gio Bernard, which you should do because yes. you don't know what's going to happen. But there was an expectation two weeks ago that he wasn't going to play. And then all of a sudden he had a monster week. That was the week he actually went out and ended up number one on the week. I, yeah, I will say, that, though, two weeks ago, that was his ribs. Am I remembering that right? Uh, I do not know for certain. I, th I thought it was something to do with his ribs. I could be way off here. But the, the injury that he's nursing right now, we saw it happen. We saw it happen in the game. He left the game because he had a some tor uh, torp, some type of foot sprain. So this is monitor this. Gio Bernard should be added immediately. Yeah, and Brooks is pointing out he did return, but, you, but uh, George Kittle – also returned after hyperextending his knee and then missed two weeks. Like guys, guys get injured and come back in the heat of yeah. the battle. Mostert just did that. He got injured, came back, and now he's on IR or yeah. about to be. Yeah. Uh, Mixon is the RB four over the last three weeks, so uh, you'd like him out there. Zach Ertz, short term IR. The expectation has been moved to four to six weeks for Zach Ertz, making him, I think, at this point, kind of just done for the year. For fantasy purposes. Yeah, he yeah, will basically. not be valuable. I mean, you could pick him up off of waivers when he's coming back and hope that whatever ailed him prior to the injury also left. Dallas Goddard is eligible to return immediately, but he's not ready. Um, he's The expectation right now is week 10, uh, which stinks because yeah. the opportunity right now would be great. But that, that being said, that's there's still a lot of season left at week 10. I mean, you're, you, you've got six weeks of solid football left, and he'll be a massively important waiver pickup. And then we got word this morning, Jarvis Landry suffered a broken rib in week five against the Colts. Now, this might be surprising to you, but he says, quote, it hurts. Yeah, that was surprising. Um, when I heard he had a broken <laughs> rib, I thought it wouldn't hurt. And then when asked. Didn't you break a rib, Mike? Yes. In our flag football league? Yeah, it sucks. You did not come back. That was like in game one, and you did not return. Uh, I did play through the rest of the game so okay I look i'm i'm with these football players man when it happens you don't realize how bad it is and then you try and go to sleep and go oh i this. can't breathe <laughs> i really what do you make of the browns offense right now i mean you have no nick chubb landry was already dealing with a hip injury baker's ribs are in bad shape the ribs situation not good in cleveland right and uh you know beckham hasn't really shown up for a couple weeks after the monster game against the Cowboys, which, by the way, that's what people do against the Cowboys. So uh, are you worried about the offense? Are you worried about Kareem Hunt? Uh, not long term, but if, if as long as Baker is banged up, you know, if over the next couple of weeks, it does give me pause to, like, may, maybe you have a better option than Beckham. It is it is possible at this point. Jason, yeah, I, you were shaking your head. Well, I'm, I'm not worried about the the – uh, the Browns offense this week I mean I look Baker hasn't been great for fantasy even when they're putting up 35 points uh, but Kareem Hunt should be good I think Odell Beckham is fine the Cincinnati Bengals this week are the matchup um, and while they've got someone who's been doing a little bit of shadow and maybe he gets on Beckham you you, you know he's the type of player that you just have to play him every week to get his breakouts he might not be the best but the Browns offense in general I'm not worried about it. I expect them to score 30 points against the Bengals I have had people try to buy low on Kareem Hunt this past week after the game. after he, he's had one bad game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they tried to get come out after of him. Here. Yeah, lots of offers featuring players such as Todd Gurley and the like. So, 
All right, uh, let's get into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. It's not huge news, but there was a little blurb, which is just, it's fun. It's fun, man. It's ridiculous. It's fun. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens may be signing Des Bryant to their practice squad. Yeah, my first thought when I saw that was, wow, Des Bryant's willing to be on a practice squad. He, at this point, after his, what, three years off or whatever it's been? Hey, I mean... I've always wondered about that. Like, you only have a certain window to play football, so you might as well give it a go. I mean, you're not going to get to do this when you're in your 40s, Des. But how old is he now? Uh, that I do not know. I've invented, it. But I think this also brings credence to there were reports earlier today that the Ravens are out on Antonio Brown. Oh, well, let's bring that up. I know I just hit the button, and we can't go back in time. But we will. Uh, Antonio Brown, people wanted us to talk about him a little bit more. Des is only 31? Correct. Man, he he burned bright. Thirty one going on thirty nine. Yeah. He was he was great in his heyday, but uh that was the Romo years. Yes. But Antonio Brown specifically, uh Mike, we talked about him earlier in the week. Mm -hmm. Uh Seattle looking like a potential front runner for Antonio Brown. A lot of people adding him in fantasy leagues right now. Uh, are there other destinations? I know the Ravens were one. Houston would be one. Is there one that's uh, at the top of the list for anybody? Do you think people should be holding him? Antonio, yeah, you should Who, be. AB is 32, by the way. Yes. He's older than Des. You should, <laughs> you, you should be stashing Antonio Brown, but you need to keep your expectations in check. Number one, you still have to wait a couple weeks for him to even be eligible to return. Number two, you don't know which team he's going to go to. If he goes to Seattle, is he the third person in the in the the target order is there anything else that the there's still some investigating going on with Antonio Brown that could bring things to light in a couple of weeks and extend the suspension but yeah it, in the in the wacky world of fantasy football he's worth putting on your bench but if somebody comes to you with a nice offer for Antonio Brown I would cash out and and let go of Sure. In in a month, you could, you could be going, man, Antonio Brown, I should have held on to him. But it's just that the probability of him turning into a league winner is so small that if someone's willing to give you a piece that upgrades your starting roster right now, you should take the deal. I love when people will pay for potential because right. then I'm capitalizing on potential immediately, whether it becomes realized or not. Yeah. I guess that makes sense, and, and ultimately, once he signs, there will be a lot of hype. There will be a lot of buzz yeah. around Antonio Brown. Okay, uh, by the way, I'm going to hit that button again. You're going to get it twice. Oh, oh man. But before, nice. before I do that, I want to thank today's sponsors, and uh, we want to tell you about a new uh, podcast from Cadence 13 and the co-creators of Slow Burn comes The Edge, Houston Astros, a six-part documentary podcast series that details the entire story of a baseball team's drive to win, no matter the cost. Now, uh, Brooks, are you interested in this podcast? I mean, you and I are the big baseball fans here. Heck yes. Yeah. Last year, the Astros, they were caught in that massive cheating scandal, rocking the sports world, putting the legitimacy of the 2017 World Series in doubt. And um, this is going to be a very, very interesting six-part series. Uh, they went... I mean, this was all the buzz for so long. This is the this trash story. cans, right? This is the trash can Oof. thing, yeah. And so uh, you're going to hear from people who were there, players that the Astros crossed. We don't use that expression enough. You've, you've crossed me you've for crossed the last me. time. That's right. And the unlikely outsiders who helped uncover the truth. The Edge, Houston Astros, is produced by Prologue Projects in a presentation by Cadence 13. Listen and subscribe for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Radio.com, or wherever you get your shows. And we want to thank Omaha Steaks Foot Clan. Congratulations for me telling you Omaha. about Omaha Steaks. Oh, man, they are so good. And it's not just steaks. They've got everything. Mike, I know you are madly in love with their burgers. I love them. Their hot dogs are absurd. Their chicken is great. Their pork chops are great. My favorite thing there are the caramel apple tartlets. Shout out also to the little uh, potato things they have. Uh, the the gratin. Gratin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, look, I'm grilling out in my backyard on my three grills. You need to be doing the same. 
<laughs> you need to be up in your grill life with Omaha Steaks. Go to omahasteaks.com, enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar, and for this week, Omaha Steaks will add two pounds of premium ground beef free with your order plus free shipping. My favorite is the Butcher's Best Sellers Package, which includes the bacon-wrapped filet mignon, smoky sweet bacon, fork tender filet mignon. Oh, yummy. <laughs> Go to OmahaSteaks.com. Again, enter footballers in the search bar for exclusive offers not found anywhere else. And don't forget when you order today, Omaha Steaks is giving you two pounds of premium ground beef with free shipping. Omaha Steaks has been bringing people together for over 100 years. Enjoy your family and your friends and enjoy the best steak of your life. Jason, do you want to talk about what you received in the mail the other day? Oh, my gosh, yeah. Someone. I, 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 it, there was no note. There was no who it's from. <laughs> But some you got a new nickname, Big Shimmy. Uh, yeah, someone out there sent me a, a chef's. Uh, what what are those called? Like a, a the, it's shirts, not an apron, a robe, a robe, cooking a, uh, cover. A cooking wait, cover. Al, they, they, Al, do you know what that thing is called? I mean, he, I know you looked it up. I it was I think it was just called a chef's jacket. A chef's there you go. Costume, if you will, <laughs> embroidered with the uh, uh, Jason Moore Grill Daddy. That's right. So yummy. Now, am I a? Uh, Thank you. We, we've been doing a lot of grilling, and um, we all have. I mean, like Al. Uh, it's, it's grill season in it's Arizona. It's grill season. I, Sorry, Snowbirds. Does anybody else feel a little insecure when, like, your favorite thing to grill is just, like, burgers? No. No. Okay. Because no. people always ask, what's the thing you like? What what complex grilling do you do in the ribs for the smoking and the grilling and the burgers cuts? Are the, the, burgers are great. They're and the I most just, common thing I cook. I just want burgers. Yes, they're delicious. All right. I promised that I would hit the button again, so enjoy. Fantasy Forecast. Jason Moore, Grill Daddy. <laughs> All right, Detroit. They take on the Falcons. Uh, Detroit is two and three. Atlanta's one and five. Falcons are two and a half point favorites. And... Uh, the over-under that I have for this game is actually 57 points. Ooh, it's moving. It is. And this is an exciting game for fantasy football purposes. Jason brought up uh, what Atlanta does on defense, which is nothing. Uh, Matthew Stafford, a great start in this one. Uh, he was my stream of the week. He's Jason's taking it to 100. Um, I did a, uh, a DraftKings uh, cage match with Al Smith yesterday. And Matthew Stafford was my quarterback in that one. This is the breakout game for Matthew Stafford. And it has been really disappointing, which for some reason with Matthew Stafford bothers me more than other players that we were high on. It's just this team saw the success of giving him control of the offense. And I don't know if it's, you know, you got a bye week mixed in there. You've got weeks without Kenny Galladay. You've got maybe a hurt Marvin Jones, maybe just a aging out Marvin Jones, who's done nothing on the year. Another player that we thought, you know, was perennially undervalued. Now he's appropriately valued because yeah. he does nothing. Um, but Atlanta just has I mean, six sacks on the year. They've given up the most touchdown passes in football. And I think Stafford would have had the breakout last week, but you just ended up with the, you know, one yard uh, touchdown runs and it just didn't work out that way. But yeah, two touchdowns on the goal line and you're and you're in a game where you just immediately blow them out. That's why Stafford didn't have a good game. It was lined up, um, but the the Jaguars couldn't come back. They couldn't score on them. So the question is, can Atlanta score on them? Uh, I do have an update on the game line. So 57 points is actually where it started. It is now at 55 and a half. Oh, it's gone down. So people Ooh. are betting the under. Okay. I don't see it, but uh, I mean, maybe that's a Marvin Jones fear. <laughs> I don't think Ma so. Marvin no. Jones doesn't move I, a line. No, not, <laughs> a, a, point not a point and a half. I, I mean, these are two defenses <laughs> that are beatable, and specifically with Atlanta. It's like when, when you're talking about Atlanta and you're talking about the Cowboys and maybe Seattle, it's the combination of a terrible defense with an awesome offense that just requires a fast pace of play, a lot of points being scored. Uh, this this is a game I think you're, you're going to fire up most every option you can. Yeah, I've been very impressed with DeAndre Swift. He's he's doing the kind of rookie running back uh, ascension that we've seen. You know, Miles Sanders, it took him a while. Other players, it takes him a little bit of time. Maybe that's learning pass protection. Maybe that's executing in practice. Whatever the case may be, 
He's earning more of the coaching staff's trust. We have him at RB18 on the week, more snaps than AP. And then uh, this fine gentleman, it's time. Oh, Kenny G. It's time. It's touchdown time. Just wallowing. Oh, just letting it go. So smooth. So smooth. So good. Yes, Kenny Galladay is an incredible play this week. Uh, speaking of dart throws here, fellas, Marvin Jones, we know he missed practice on Wednesday. We'll, we'll see what his status actually is. Let's say Marvin Jones is out. Let's just hypothesize here. The matchup is so good. Yeah. Is there anyone on the Lions that you're like, I'm going to get Quintez Cephas into my lineup. I'm going to get Marvin Hall. I'm going to take a shot on one of these players. Amendola? Maybe, yeah. It, maybe Amendola. That would be the shot for me. Okay. Just from a volume perspective. You always have Marvin Hall going deep. You've always got, uh, you know, Cephas has been involved. He was when, the one who stepped in like those first, or week one when uh, when Kenny G was out. Yeah, and Hall is the deep bomb threat. I, I, in a in a redraft league, I don't think I'm going to dig that deep. It certainly could happen for any one of those guys, but uh, you know, there's usually better options that I like that are more regular on the target meter uh, that I would put ahead. More fibrous, right? And so if you know if you're set in a DFS lineup and you want a contrarian uh, big play opportunity, certainly a Mar Marvin Hall or a Quintus Cephas could could be there. Yeah, Hawkinson is completely in play here. The matchup is incredible, and Hawkinson has been solid. Uh, Hayden Hurst, where how what's you guys' temperature on him? Because he he seems to be better when Julio Jones is playing. Well, the whole Falcons offense is better. I mean, you could say that literally about just about everyone. I mean, you're Russell Gage. Um, Russell Gage was great when Julio was out there and terrible when Julio wasn't. It, the whole offense takes a step back when Julio's not there. So I think that's all you're seeing. I'm not that into Hayden Hurst. I know he had a big game last week, but one of it was, you know, a lot of it was one big broken play down the sideline, in which, hey, not everybody can, you know, have a long breakaway touchdown, but it, it seemed more lucky than prescriptive. I completely agree. Hayden okay. Hurst is like the... You know, your your family's excited about ordering out, and then you decide at the last minute, you're like, eh, let's just make something from the fridge. Yep. And it's like, it's that's just, why I feel like you put Hearst in there. You're not you're still going to eat. You're still going to eat, but you're not expecting big things. Yeah, it's leftovers at it's best. It's leftovers. Um, but there are some big players in this game. Hawkinson we'll talk about later. Matt Ryan, Todd Gurley. Matt Ryan's a different quarterback with Julio Jones active, available, and so is Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley is – you know, finding the end zone more with Julio Jones involved in this offense because he's he's elite, mm -hmm. but doesn't get elite coverage if Julio Jones is uh, involved. So One thing I'll say about Todd Gurley here before we move on is that his involvement in the passing game has changed the last two weeks. His routes run have gone from being in the 39 range to up, up above 50% of routes run. Uh, you've seen mm -hmm. it in the targets as well, nine targets in the last two games. That's really what was – Missing, he was so touchdown dependent. But maybe if he is being more involved, and you know, we he has been, then you've got a higher baseline without the touchdowns. All right, uh, yeah the uh, the Lions are twenty seventh in football right now in terms of fantasy points given up to running backs, and Gurley gets a lot of work. So, uh, Cleveland, the Browns at four and two take on the Cincinnati Bengals at one four and one. Bengals came out to that huge lead on Indianapolis, ended up blowing that lead last week. The Browns, it, it almost surprised me to read the 4-2 and two record because it feels like they lost three or four times last week with just how bad that game get, went against Pittsburgh, losing Baker and doing nothing on offense. But the Browns are favored in this one, three-point favorites on the road, 50-point over under. The game is interesting. Uh, from a fantasy perspective, though, limited options in Cleveland – Kareem Hunt, yes, absolutely. Uh, you've got to put him into your lineup. We have him as the RB5 on the week. And then, uh, you know, Jason talked about it yesterday. If the game script goes to where Cleveland is ahead in this one, which I personally don't see it going that direction, where the, I don't think this is a blowout, but Dearness Johnson could be interesting in mop-up duty. Beckham, I think you're playing him this week. And, Mike, what do you think about Austin Hooper? Uh, I love Austin Hooper this week, actually. Uh, it, it com comparatively to the the other options that are out there, he a little sneak peek. He is my start of the week, and I will break that down when we get there. Uh, on the other side of the ball, though, like Joe Burrow is 
absolutely in play here. The, the The Cleveland defense is not a scary matchup. Joe Burrow, in fact, has already dropped three hundo and three on this team. That was back in his second start ever <laughs> in the NFL. So I, I'm I'm fine streaming Joe Burrow here if you want in on that action. Yeah, this is the first rematch in the NFL this year. And if you remember back to week two when these teams played each other, it was 35-30, to 30, I believe. 65 points scored, yep. a monstrous game. And, uh, you know, you, you could see more of that. Granted, the health of the Browns is not the same as it was back in week two with Chubb. Um, so, you know, uh, that's why it's 50-point over-under right now. Joe Mixon, we talked about the situation there. Geo would be a stash right now on waiver wires mm -hmm. uh, if he's available and uh, not already rostered. At the wide receiver position, you know, we talked about upside for Joe Burrow in this matchup. I think it's still a, a bit interesting to sort out the wide receivers. Boyd has had ups and downs this year. Green, mostly downs a nice week last week. So I guess that puts T. Higgins in the highest likelihood of success category. Yeah, T. Higgins has turned into a, a – I think it would, we were on the footcast yesterday, and I mentioned T. Higgins is now a – he's in must-start territory for me. He's just – like Joe Burrow, we know that he is going to throw. A, the, the, the volume of passing is still just going to keep happening. And meanwhile, T. Higgins, you know, since week three, he's averaging over 20% of the targets – from Joe Burrow, which is and then a so it's twenty percent of a gigantic pie. And T. Higgins is a very talented player. We've already seen multiple big plays from him throughout the season, throughout the short season of of his rookie year. So T. Higgins has moved firmly into a a must start wide receiver for me. All right, Pittsburgh five and zero taking on the Tennessee Titans at five and zero. Something's got to give. So Derrick Henry has his best game of the year. By the way, the Titans are one-and-a-half-point home favorites, 15-and-a-half-point really? over-under. They are. Um, and I think that's fair. I think that's fair. They're at home. Both of these teams, I see them very similar in terms of, uh, you know, if, if I had to pick this game, I'd pick Tennessee to win it. Um, but, you know, Tannehill's been great. Henry had the breakout game, and here he gets to face just a dominant rushing defense thus far, you know, you're not doing anything with Derrick Henry. You're not moving him because of the matchup. Well, so I don't know, though. Is this weather report accurate in the 70s? Mm. You're thinking that's, it's a little, a, that's a little too warm. A little, little too, too toasty? Warm. Yeah. That's too, look, Yetis do not like 70-degree weather. It doesn't have anything to do with the Steelers' awesome run no, nothing, defense. No, nothing to do with the that The fact that all. they're top three and only giving up fewer than 15 fantasy points a game, it has to do with 70 degrees. Well, 70 it, degrees it, is just a little too warm. Yeah, it was, it was 40 out, and then their defense are playing so hot that mm. they uh, – They lit the field <laughs> on <it> fire. <laughs> you know, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, A.J. Brown <laughs> – I hate that you have that button. <laughs> I hate that you have that button. I really do. But it, it's a it, it's a fair accountability that yeah. you have it. Checks uh, and balances. Checks That's and what balances. the footballers are all about. Yes. we uh, Three branches of government here, <laughs> um, all ending in the Supreme Court of Judge Giamatti. That's right. Uh, let's go A.J. Brown in your lineup, Henry in your lineup. Tannehill, I think he is the one where I asked the question, is he a must-start after last week's performance? Lost Taylor Lewan. Jason, you said he's not a must start and you'd probably be pivoting him. Like, would you play Carson Wentz tonight over Ryan Tannehill? That is a great comp um, because he's available on your waivers. I don't think I would go that far. Tannehill's flames have been too hot. We talk about this when a guy is playing as good as, he, as Tannehill's mm -hmm. been playing. You don't let the matchup sway you unless you have another really good option. Carson Wentz is a waiver option in a decent matchup. He's not a guy that I am clamoring to get into my lineup. If I had a Stafford I could pivot to or, you know, obviously a, a, a Matt, Matt Ryan, Ryan. Yeah. I'm going to definitely pivot. But otherwise, I, Stafford isn't someone you have to start this week, but he's someone you probably will. And then Corey Davis will be back for this game. He's been uh, pulled off the COVID IR, so Tannehill will have a full allotment uh, the wide receiver position last week, I thought Beckham would be able to take advantage of uh, the fancy points given up by Pittsburgh. It didn't didn't transpire. I mean, they have to protect Tannehill for that to happen. 
that will be the interesting part. It is a 50 and a half point over under. So we should see some points up on the board. Um, Pittsburgh allowing 55 rushing yards per game. If you had to go over under 55 rushing yards per game, I think you're taking the over with Derrick Henry. Correct. Yeah. Even if it's 55 carries for 1.1 yards each. Also correct. Okay. Uh, Pace of play on the year. Pittsburgh is 27th in pace of play. Tennessee is fourth. So that'll be interesting to watch. Big Ben. You're excited about Big Ben this week, Jason. I am. This is If you had Tannehill and you had Big Ben, I would start Big Ben. I look at this matchup and say that this is – Big Ben has not been needed this season. He's been disappointing, but not in his play, just in his fantasy output. Uh, you know, he's he's played easy opponents where their defense is completely dominated. Andy, you said you'd pick the Titans to win in this game. So this isn't going to be a, a, a situation where the Steelers can do what they want to do, which is completely defense and run the ball. Big Ben will have to throw the ball. You have Juju who, mm. say what you will, no, no. he's obviously capable of getting it done. You've got Mapletron who's broken out, and you know now you get Deontay Johnson back. So I think the weapons – and, and uh, Tennessee's, defense is, Tennessee's defense is above average, but I wouldn't say that this is a great defense. I, I think this is one that we disagree on. I would start Tannehill over Roethlisberger pretty easily in this matchup. Interesting. The home team, Roethlisberger's done really nothing for fantasy purposes all year long. His ceiling has been the quarterback 11. Uh, I take Tennessee in this game, but I would take the under. I think this will be more of a back and forth, sl like a, the pace of play that Pittsburgh wants to play. And so uh, I would not be pivoting to Big Ben myself. So I'm curious, Mike, where would you weigh in on the quarterbacks here uh, for the matchup? It, this is a really tough call. It, I would allow the matchup between Ben and uh, Tannehill to dictate it. So I would go with Big Ben. Okay. Uh, what did you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean you'd let the matchup dictate it? The, that the the – the Titans right now are 26th against fantasy quarterbacks. I see. Meanwhile, the Steelers are seventh. Got so it. So it's a, and I'm, I I do agree with what Jason's saying. Like if you have Tannehill and no and no one else, I'm not freaked out about it. But it, just in a heads up situation, like I'm making a uh, lineup here, a DFS lineup. I'm going to put Big Ben in. So and it's more about the defenses. I, yes. I think it's important to say this because Big Ben is is on plenty of waivers. If you have Tannehill. I would not drop Tannehill to pick up Big Ben, even though I said I would play Big Ben over Tannehill. You've got to look at the whole season. Yes. Tannehill's just been playing way too good. Their defense isn't as good as the Steelers, meaning they're going to need him on, on a regular basis. But if you have the ability to have both of those guys on your roster and you could choose which one to go with, I would I would go with Big Ben. But it is close. It's not just uh, a home run in one direction. All right. Break the wide receiver core for the Steelers down for me. Where are you looking for production in – Again, it's the same question as last week. And in what order would you be looking for it? So if if we are sure that Deontay Johnson is back, which uh, all the reports were last week, he, Deontay was close to playing. It's a minor injury. He should be back. I would go with I would go Johnson, Chase Claypool, and I would refuse to play Juju. Uh, Deontay fully practiced, and in weeks Perfect. prior, he had been limited on these weeks. So it's a good sign. Uh, Claypool has as many rushing touchdowns this year as Clyde Edwards Alaire, Frank Gore, and David Montgomery combined. Which is a bit of a trick because that's, I think Clyde and Gore probably have zero each. Yeah, that sounds right. Because they keep the, the the referees are conspiring against Edwards Alaire. Yeah. That, there, uh, there is, that is, a, is that a touchdown? Flag yeah. holding. Yeah, there's a there's a movement. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they don't like him. Is that why they got Lev signed there too? It's the refs that got yes. him signed? Yes. Oh. Well, the, yeah, well, Andy Reid had no choice. If you keep taking away my superstar running back touchdowns, I'll have to let somebody else score them. We were really close to uh, the every week trust of Jonu Smith, and then he got hurt, and now he faces the eighth best uh, fantasy defense in, in terms of points given up to the tight end position. He was limited on Wednesday, didn't finish the game last week. Can you really trust Jonu Smith coming back if he, if he was you know, declared active on Sunday? I, I would trust him if he gets in full practices from here on out. If he's limited up until game time, then I think you, you might want to look for a pivot. The difficulty is at tight end, you can't always you can't always find a pivot. Um, you know, maybe I at, at, in that situation I would look for someone like a Dalton Schultz if if John who is really 
injured, but even then I'm not going to drop Janu for him. So I'm probably forced to play Janu. I'm just praying he's fully participating in practice the rest of the week. Carolina Panthers at three and three take on the New Orleans Saints at three and two. Saints are seven and a half point favorites. It's a fifty one point over under. All five Saints game this year games this year have hit the over, for what it's worth. Hmm. And uh, I would take the over in this one, too, with the 51 points, what we've seen from Carolina's offense. Um, you know, this is one of those games where I want I want to believe that the Saints defense can put it together after the bye being how, you know, just what they were last year. We haven't quite seen that in terms of at least in fantasy football. They're 29th in terms of uh, giving up almost 24 points per game to the quarterback position, 32nd against tight ends middle of the pack against running backs and wide receivers. So on paper, you you could look at Carolina on the road here and say, well, maybe it won't be so bad for you know Mike Davis, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore. Is that how you look at it? Do you think that they're going to be okay in this game, or is this going to be a tough one for Teddy B on the road? No, I, I look I look at it that uh, I'm very interested in the everyone from the Carolina Panthers. Everyone that you should play, uh, or I should say, everyone that you can play from Carolina – I'm I'm playing them, but that does not extend to Curtis Samuel, whether or not he is in. And Ian Thomas, man, <laughs> he's That's their tight end. That was, that was fun. He that, was, that was fun dreams. Been the biggest disappointment when when we were in the 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 preseason, the right. draft season, and looking at the Johnu Smiths and Ian Thomases and trying to project. Uh, you know, I'm happy that I went with Johnu and and was not on Ian, but I I I wondered if I was wrong there. And he has had such opportunity. And he's played great matchups and just stunk. So you cannot start Ian Thomas, even though starting a tight end against the Saints usually is fantastic. Yeah, uh, as far as Teddy Bridgewater, I wouldn't have the the guts or the heart to play him on the road here. He has not been good for fantasy um, this season outside of the Arizona game, really. So I think you can do better than Bridgewater, um, but... Robbie Anderson has to be in your lineup every week. Mike Davis has to be in your lineup. DJ Moore should be in your lineup. I think, yeah, I would play him. The 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 Saints secondary is still beat up, and he's getting enough targets and has enough talent. He, he, sh he should be in your lineup. Yeah, I mean, he's at least a flex. If Curtis Samuel comes back, uh, maybe the targets will go down a little bit, but you guys are right. I'm also fine playing Teddy Bridgewater. I am personally playing Teddy Bridgewater in uh, one of our important leagues. Over who? Um, I, gosh, who did I lose? Uh, is this guy, uh, I've, cool story, bro. Yeah, cool story. <laughs> great audio. Uh, oh, Lamar. Oh gosh. Jackson. Ja that was him. That's the guy. I don't have him because of the bye week. Yeah. Mm. So it was a big setup. Yeah. Um, yeah, here, here's one of the reasons why B Bridgewater. Yeah. That <laughs> was you on yourself. yourself. You just cricketed yourself. Sometimes you've got to be. Accountable to yourself. I didn't even Checks realize you were doing a joke. Yeah, I wonder if it was that bad. <laughs> I was right there with you guys. <laughs> I was here for that. I uh, last week against Atlanta. This is the Atlanta we just told the story about. the The great Matthew Stafford breakout. Mm -hmm. Bridgewater has been was twelfth uh, last week against Atlanta, and they uh, they had a history of top six performances. So sure, but quarterback three, one three hundred and two is a pretty good line um, for a quarterback. I'll I'll water bet somebody that he is outside the top 12 this week. I don't I mean think, it, otherwise, I wouldn't take him as a top 12. I would I, I'm with Jason. I'm fine playing Teddy Bridgewater, okay. but I would rather play the other streaming options that we have laid out. Yeah, you got a bye week, so I guess you don't have a lot of options. Alvin Kamara, 21 opportunities per game this year. You should probably play him. Mm -hmm. Michael Thomas, uh the truth is, is if he returns, you're probably playing Michael Thomas. I would play him, yeah. There is no quarterback in football that just throws where he should throw more than Drew Brees, if that makes sense. Like, you, you look at the situation, and you always want to find an opportunity for Drew Brees. You want to say, oh, it's a Traquan Smith week, or he won't throw to Kamara on this play again. He can't throw to him again. This it. He just, that's his game. It's close to the line of scrimmage. It's Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara. I would expect Thomas to probably outperform expectations if he's active. Yeah, and and uh, one name just to throw out here because the matchup is so good for Alvin Kamara. Yes, uh, and I'm Mike, in, I'm in on this. You're you're talking about uh, Dearness Johnson, and you know people are having to play really deep, bad running backs. I think you know Latavius Murray is someone that in this matchup yes. could end up just like he did two weeks ago with two touchdowns. 
and being used as a goal line guy, and y- you could do worse. The last couple of weeks, he has seen forty percent of the running back attempts. Now, like you would, you would wish that was a higher uh, number for a, a player you're going to plug into a fantasy lineup, but against the Carolina Panthers, that that should be enough to at least give you something. And for clarity, this is not late game carries. This is first drive, first carry of game type of stuff for Latavius Murray. Yeah, he's he's evolved. Buffalo Bills, four and two on a bit of a losing streak. How do you fix it? Take on the New York Jets. Take them on in New York and then have Vegas declare you 13-point favorites. (laughs) Which, I mean, that's probably too small. Now, to be fair, this game would always be in New York. Yeah, that's a strong, no, yeah, it, well, strong point. Well, but yeah. no, yes. it's it's not though. It's, isn't it New Jersey? Oh, that, how funny! That's, that's a fair point. It would only be in New York if <laughs> if, the, if bills it, the bills are at home. Oh, good point, Mike. Well done. Uh, Forty-five point over under with the Bills at thirteen point favorites gives the Jets a very generous implied point total of sixteen points. Super generous. How but, do they get sixteen points? Genuinely, genuine question. How, Mike, how Michael P. Ryan, baby. Oh, gosh. Please. No. Please. No. It's, I'm not asking you. I'm asking the fantasy football gods. Show me your mercy. When Michael P. Ryan prays to them, they don't even hear his <laughs> prayers. <laughs> that he hasn't earned an audience. Over the last two games, the Jets have averaged five points. He, they here's scored the, five points. <laughs> They, they scored oh, they got shut out. 10 okay. points and zero points, but I like being able to say it as they've averaged five points. No, that's great. And, um, Mike, that should be one of the bullet points against you putting LaMichael Pirine into your lineup. Look, there's – Brashad Perryman is, is somewhat interesting because of the targets he got last week and the fact that he's going to get more downfield work. So I added him to the bench of some leagues to see what transpires, what happens with Perryman. They don't want to throw the ball to Jamison Crowder this much. I promise you they do not. They have to. Last week it didn't work out as well because they tried to do it a bunch, but it was Joe Flacco behind center. Look, this is a disaster. What is, what is the rule on this show? We're not supposed to talk about yeah, the Jets. Yeah, we've already given uh, way too much and time. And Mike keeps breaking it with this weird Pirine I rhetoric. don't have a choice. Well, all that being said, you actually did bring up something valuable for fantasy, which is on the Jets, which is Brashad Perriman. Uh, all jokes aside, this is a team that has to throw the ball. They're going to be throwing the ball all game, every game, because they're going to be down. And, uh, you know, Perriman is involved. He can get it done if he's getting enough targets. Just like Jamison Crowder's been valuable this year, and he's on the Jets. I don't want a piece of the running game. I want a piece of the passing game, and it's going to be dink and dunk a lot, and it's going to be gross and ugly. But volume, they're still an NFL team that has to play 60 minutes. So I think those two wide receivers are, you know, gross, but you can put them in your flex. They can they can get you 10 points. Yeah, Perryman, the offseason signing, the difference between right now and hyperdrive has to be Brashad Perryman. Mm. Still warming up the hyperdrive. Oh, yeah. I mean, That's it takes, a, it's a really long warm-up. Yeah. Several weeks. Yeah. Adam Gaze is still the coach? Unfortunately. Okay. Number two. Uh, let's talk about the more exciting uh, situation here. Uh, Josh Allen himself. Josh Allen is oh, uh, the stallion. It's time to get it going again. A couple bad weeks Excellent. for Josh Allen. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worried about those bad weeks at all in the slightest. Uh, I just made a trade for Kyler Murray, and I was bringing it up in the in the studio. If I could trade Kyler Murray for Josh Allen, even though Kyler Murray is currently the quarterback one. I would do it. The big performances from Josh Allen are capable. Last week, it was a rainy game uh, with the Chiefs that, uh, you know, the passing game didn't work. He had a deep bomb to Diggs that the ball slipped out of his hands in the end zone. I mean, I you know, Josh Allen to me is still awesome. And you know, if you can buy low on him and get a trade, I, I would be trading for Josh Allen right now. What do you do at running back? I mean, the, the matchup's so juicy, but, uh, you know, Zach Moss looked awful last week. Yes, he did. Uh, but he could get all the mop-up duty in a game where they're heavily favored. And Devin Singletary didn't look good either. He'll be the first running back out on the field. I feel like he's a flex, and Moss is a desperation play. I agree. That's exactly right. I would rather play Latavius Murray. I don't know if I would. I would probably play Devin Singletary ahead of Latavius Murray because of volume, and he's more talented. I would play Latavius Murray ahead of Zach Moss, LaMichael Prerine, Frank Gore even in a revenge game. I I just don't want the running options in this game. 
All right, John Brown, I don't think you should play him. No, it's too sketchy. Too risky business, and uh, I guess that makes Cole Beasley a dart throw. But Diggs is in your lineup, obviously. Uh, the Cowboys at 2-4 and four take on the Washington football team at 1-5. Washington. Washington's a one-point favorite. Really? Oh, man. Really? I, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. No. No, no they're not. No way. No, that had to have been uh that that seems wrong to me. I see one and a half. I see Dallas as oh, one I, and a half right, point favorite. I favorites. am betting. Right, so yeah, I see Dallas minus is. one and a half. So Fair I enough. think that's wrong. Uh forty seven and a half point over under. That would shock me if, if Washington was favored. I'll bet you that Dallas started the week. Underdogs? N- no, favored and that it's changed. I I'm will I will guess that Dallas up. stays still still favored. Um that being said, what a what a week for the NFC East. We got the we got the Eagles and the Giants. We get Dallas and Washington. Mm. And here here's the the headline there. The NFC East has two victories most likely this week. So it, get, <laughs> most, it gets better. I love that it could even be most likely. Uh the Washington football team is now favored by a point in this game. So that is the up to date line. Yes. So it changed. That is correct. Why? Because of Andy Dalton and the Arizona Cardinals and what people saw in that Dallas game that they believe that the Washington uh, that the Dallas Cowboys are imploding, as well as there's been a lot of reports of unnamed sources, very anonymous player, uh, yeah, coming out and saying that that the coaching has been terrible, that they're ill prepared, that people are not putting in full effort. I mean, the vibes. You know, that's we we try to focus on analytics and we're doing all of the research behind the scenes. We don't want to be a narrative street, but there is reality to there, good vibes and bad element. vibes. Absolutely. And you have to pay attention to this. The, the vibes are bad in Dallas right now as the division leader. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's the momentum factor. You know, you can you can see what you saw on the field. Andy Dalton. I I know the matchup. Looks like it, it, it's a good one. I don't want to play Andy Dalton. No. Like, I'm pretty out on Teddy Bridgewater this week. I would much rather play Teddy Bridgewater with what we've seen him, you know, the weapons he has. There's just a trust factor here, and the trust is zero. Like, uh, with the ultimate draft kit, we have risk ratings. The risk rating for Andy Dalton is 9.9 out of 10 on the week because he could go out and give you two points at the quarterback position due to turnovers Missing guys, sacks, you know, the defensive line in Washington could put some pressure on him that turns him into probably the Andy Dalton that he is now. So are you pivoting away from the Dallas Cowboys pass catching options? Not Amari Cooper because the volume, I mean, he's a top five targeted guy. He might be number one in football right now in total targets. He's up there and he's the wide receiver seven on the year. So no, I'm not moving away from Amari Cooper. I watched that game against Arizona, and every first read was Amari Cooper. I kept looking to see, will Lamb get this ball? Will Gallup get the ball? He's looking for Cooper first, so I think by process of volume, he's fine. But outside of that, yeah, I'm I'm not really excited. And so you'll, you'll move away from CeeDee Lamb? It didn't, Lamb ended up with seven yards. He ended up with seven receptions in that game. But, uh, no, I'm not super excited about it. I, I Wide receiver three on the week. Okay. Uh, All right. You know, that's fine. Yeah, Michael Gallup is out. He is not in play. It, in a funny thing of uh, statistical anomaly, <laughs> Washington <laughs> remains very strong against fantasy wide receivers <laughs> because apparently the, the tight end just destroys them so much. Uh, Dalton Schultz is in play here. I saw enough volume. He's, he's, he's running enough routes that in this tight end landscape, you still should play Schultz as like a as a top 10 guy. All right. Now, do we have an update on Zach Martin? All world guard for the Cowboys. I've been trying to find something. I, uh, Brooks, I, I know you're the Cowboys anything. fan. Have you seen an update? No, just that he's questionable. Very. Yeah. He's, yeah just uncertain for, for the game. Yeah. He's still in the protocol. That yeah. Offensive line. That was once the complete right. strength of the team is looking rough. If Zach Martin is out, uh, that that to me makes a big difference. I I think if he was there with these weapons, I'm not as anti Andy Dalton as you are, uh, Andy. But if Zach Martin is out, then I'm I'm right there with you. I have the the gross question for you, Andy. 
All right. I'm prepared. Because on the other side, look, Terry McLaurin, he gave a little bit away here. Terry McLaurin is your star of the week. Yeah. McKissick and Gibson continue to be featured in the, the, Talk about the smoo- passing game. Smooches? Smooches, J.D. McKissick, Kyle yeah. Allen, or Andy Dalton? I, I don't feel good. You have to pick I'm one. I'm nauseated. It's Kyle Allen, isn't it? It's it's Kyle Allen. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. He was the first player I wrote in to my taking it up to 100. I'm telling you right now. If Kyle – let me let me speak to Kyle real quick. Uh, Mr. Allen, do you want to win this week? Do you want to be perceived as a su- successful NFL quarterback? Yeah. That's his voice, by the way. Uh, I'm glad to have you on the line, live with Kyle Allen. I'm glad to be here. Um, here's what you do. You throw the ball on every single play. You do two things. You throw the ball to Terry McLaurin. All right. You, you target him, or you – you freak out in the pocket and you dump the ball up oh. to Antonio Gibson. Oh, oh. You don't do anything else. Nothing else. This is called the Drew Brees plan. This is Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara. You do it with Terry McLaurin. You do it with Antonio Gibson, and you will be fine. All right, man. <laughs> Thank you. Good talking to you. Glad we had a du- direct line of communication there. The sound quality was pretty decent on that phone call, too. Yeah, I don't know where his accent came from. I'm not sure of his... Uh birthplace uh it's from uh some place in between <laughs> childhood and adulthood i mean <laughs> puberty puberty land i don't know um logan thomas maybe. probably not uh, maybe no i uh, i mean he, he's got enough metrics on the you know the air yards the targets the routes run but it, it hasn't been great for him outside of his touchdown games and i i would look elsewhere i would rather have dalton schultz I can agree with on the that. other side of the field than Logan Thomas, and and that's as deep as you need to go at tight end. Right. Yeah. Starts of the week. All right, starts of the week for week seven. Very excited to bring them to you. Matt Ryan is my start of the week at the quarterback position, taking on Detroit. I'm going to chase those Matt Ryan points this week. Both of the quarterbacks in this game are a great starts. Uh, highest over under of the week. He's a different quarterback with Julio. Uh, he was the seventh, sixth, and second quarterback with Julio active. So uh, that's all there is to it. Matt Ryan, start of the week. Absolutely. My start of the week at quarterback is Matt Ryan. Uh, that is who <laughs> I would love to start. But if you can't have Matt Ryan, uh, we talked about Ben Roethlisberger earlier. He hasn't had to do much with easy wins over the Giants, the Texans, the Eagles, and the Browns. But this is an undefeated Tennessee-favored team. He will have to throw. He's got DeAndre Johnson back, Mapletron out there, and Juju could still catch two touchdowns. So I, I think Ben Roethlisberger has a good game. My start of the week at the quarterback is actually Matt Ryan because I picked him up in our league of record to play him over Cam Newton. But my start of the week for the fantasy footballers is Gardner Minshew. The Chargers are giving up the third most points per game to the quarterback position. They are allowing 273 passing yards a game. Meanwhile, Gardner is averaging 280. Uh, he's we, We've highlighted kind of a lot of streaming options this week, but Gardner is he's in the mix for me as well. Can I put you on the spot here, Mike? Yes, please Since you do. did that with Dalton and Kyle Allen. Would you play Herbert over Gardner in this same game? I – man, that one's – that's very close. I would – I'd go with Herbert. I think the upside is more on uh, his shoulders. All right, my running back start of the week is from that game. It's Justin Jackson. He is, uh, He's looked like the better of these running backs. Saw 59% of the snaps uh, compared to Josh Kelly's 35%. Uh, once Austin Eckler left, 21 opportunities in his first game without Eckler, and Jacksonville is 28th against opposing fantasy running backs. Healthy over-under in this game. I love Justin Jackson, and he is yep. a uh, he's a really good DFS play this week too. I like it. My start of the week at running back is Todd Gurley in that Atlanta-Detroit matchup. He's being more involved in the uh, receiving game. The volume has been there for Gurley. It has felt a little bit like it's a matter of his touchdown probability. If he gets touchdowns, it's going to be a great game. Well, this is a game that says he has a great odds of getting a touchdown. you got the Lions as the opponent. That ups your touchdown probability. You have the highest over-under of the week. That's going to up your touchdown probability. They are favored at home by Vegas. Those things up the touchdown probability. I think he gets in the end zone. Our running back starts of the week, Jason. It's like when uh, the action stars of yesteryear 
Yeah. All reform. You know, the, uh, the expendables. <laughs> there you go. You got Todd Gurley. I'm going with David Johnson, man, from the Houston Texans against Green David Bay. David Johnson. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, he gets to take on the Packers, who are allowing, in fact, the most fantasy points to the running back position. They have gotten back on track in the AB, the after Bob oh, years for yeah. the Houston yeah. Texans. 30 what plus. Is this, three AB? Is that this game? <laughs> like, yes. Look. 30 plus points each of the past two weeks and in those weeks 21 david johnson opportunities he's still averaging 10 yards per reception he can get it done there i'm i'm with dj this week all right wide receiver start of the week tmc terry mclaurin terry mclaurin against dallas oh my yes. goodness he's got a couple weeks in a row outside the top 24 at the wide receiver position dallas has uh submitted paperwork in order to change that couple big plays here from TMC in this game. Dallas 30th against opposing fantasy wide receivers. Targets are insane on the year for Terry McLaurin. Kyle Allen will get him the football, and we are going to see a big play touchdown All right. from Terry McLaurin in this game. Book it. Ooh, that's great news. Uh, at, <laughs> at wide receiver, my start of the week is DJ Chark. He is back on the field. He should be getting healthier and healthier. 14 targets last week. He didn't come through with this great fantasy game, but you've got Gardner as your start of the week. Mm -hmm. I think a big reason why is going to be DJ Chark this I week. I have really thought about trading for him. Yeah. Chark? Yeah, I mean, sure. he looks to be the clear number one after last week. And the Chargers, I mean, they've lost Derwin James, Mel Derwin James Melvin Ingram, Chris Harris Jr. This is a beat-up defense that I think Chark can exploit. Chark has been a, it's been a wild ride this year because you had it start out where the, the targets weren't there. Gets hurt, comes back, puts up a huge game, gets hurt again, and then he gets this tremendous volume of last year or, or uh, last week. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm with I agree with Andy. Like I, buy low. DJ Chark is was a my guy this year. I've believed in him. It's been a really rocky start, but there's still a lot of football left, and I think you should go get DJ Chark. My wide receiver start of the week. I already alluded to it, but T Higgins is a must start wide receiver. From here on out, since the week three breakout, he is averaging eight targets a game. Five for 76 uh, is his average. The Browns only have one game of shutting down the wide receiver position. They are allowing the fourth most points to the position. It's I think Higgins is a great play. I think Boyd is in play to end. And the, the corpse of A.J. Green, I think, is you, you could do worse. Which is saying something. TJ Hawkinson against Atlanta is my tight end start of the week. No team is more benevolent to the tight end position than Atlanta. Uh, they've given up top 10 weeks to opposing tight ends, not named Ian Thomas, each and every week this year. Uh, ranked dead last against tight ends. Oh, Ian Thomas. You got four to five targets from TJ Hawkinson. Maybe no Marvin Jones raising that ceiling. Three touchdowns on the year, meaning he can, you know, he's not dropping them all this year. Huge over under. Love Hockley's this week. Sure, I'm going with Hunter Henry against the, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Last time we saw him before the bye, he was a tight end 10. Jacksonville was ranked 27th against the position. I think he's a solid bet for double-digit fantasy points, which is, oh, that is glorious when you're outside of those top, you know, three or four tight ends on the week. Hunter Henry should be good to go. Now, do we, with the way that we pronounce Justin Herbert's name, Oh, of, of Justin Herbert. Do we is this Hunter Henry? <laughs> that's where, that's where I was going. So I'm glad you tracked yeah. Hunter Henry. Hunter yeah. Henry. I feel like he just became a Viking instantaneously. <laughs> Hunter. Hunter. Come forth, Hunter. Fetch the meat, Hunter. <laughs> Fetch the meat. Hunter, come forth. Accept your start of the week. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, my tight end start of the week. Austin Hooper, fifty plus yards uh, each of the past two weeks. Five receptions in three straight games. Austin Hooper is getting more and more involved. The matchup is great. Cincinnati's giving up the six most points to the tight end position. How generous is the Cincinnati Bengals defense to the tight ends? Zach Ertz had 70 yards against them. <laughs> Zach Ertz, I can't do anything all year except against the Cincinnati Bengals. Austin Hooper is in play. We did it. We got through the starts of the week, but we aren't done yet. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. With the goggles on by, I just don't even know how to be 
But I guess I'll pick someone else and go with the Packers. Mason Crosby. You did it again. Oh, 100. Un unbelievable. Thank you. B and B. Yeah, B and B. I mean, and there's no other words that rhyme. Oh, no. man. I wonder if I will have published works in the future. Like, will Shel people Silverstein over here. study <laughs> these rhymes? Probably. <laughs> Can we, uh, we need like a bathroom book. Yes. Of that's just Jason Moore's kicker rhyme. Oh it, it should just be a book of poetry. Can we just I'll, compi I'll Can we it. compile all of them all time? Somebody out there is going to do that. I'm sorry to that person for having to spend that time. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction. DJ Chark signed jersey, 50 bucks. Oh, nice. Oh, Yesterday, a DJ Chark signed jersey for $50. It's called buying low. Right before the breakout. That's mm. impressive. All right, pristineauction.com. If you want to check out their hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions, honestly, I've been checking out their Back to the Future auctions. It's Cause, true. Because I, I, I like Back to the Future, and I like that memorabilia game, and uh, they got a lot of stuff on there. So uh, pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS. That'll do it for us. We'll be back with more matchups tomorrow. See how much cereal I can eat tonight. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Uh, have fun watching the game tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget about Omaha Steaks. Their packages are awesome with the Butcher's Best Sellers package. Includes the famous bacon wrap filet mignon. And right now, you can go to omahasteaks.com, enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar, and for this week, Omaha Steaks will add two pounds of premium ground beef free with your order, plus free shipping. Omaha Steaks has been bringing people together for over 100 years. Enjoy family, enjoy friends, enjoy the best steak of your life.